This is Official Nerd Business. Hey nerd boys and girls, welcome back to Euler Problem 24 Permutations. This is the theory video. There will also be a coding video and I've split the two up and into diff two different parts because like with Euler Problem 3 which was about divisors and not having divisors meaning that you were a prime number. Um, this uh, challenge also has some quite hefty meaty um, bit of theory around it so I want to dive into the, the, the theoretic bit here and then have a um, coding video where we use that uh, newfound knowledge to actually beat the problem. So let's get cracking. This is a problem 24 over on project Euler.net Lexographic permutations. A permutation is an ordered arrangement of objects. Um, there is an example for the digits 1, 2, 3 and 4 with a uh, sh reshuffling uh, going at uh, 3, 1, 2, 4 which is a permutation um, and if we take a list of all possible permutations and we order them numerically or alphabetically we call it lexicographic order. Then there's an example for 0, 1 and 2. The challenge asks us if we take all the numbers from 0 up to 9 what is the millionth lexicographic permutation. So first off, what is a permutation? Uh, let's let's look at uh, the list A, B, C, D. I think uh, doing this with uh, letters instead of numbers makes a more uh, clear example because then we can use the actual numbers to reference to um, places in arrays, etc., and uh, use them as list indexes and whatever. Um, and as a result, you would get a letter. So that would separate the two concepts of list contents and list indices a little more than the example from Project Euler. Um, the list A, B, C and D has permutation C, D, A, B. A, B, C, D itself is a permutation and D, C, B, A, so the original list reversed. It's, these are all permutations. So a natural follow-up question would be how many permutations does the list A, B, C, D actually have? Let's uh, get all of these elements let's uh, uh, let's put them in a vase this uh, this we've all done in um, at school I guess at some point there was math uh, math class and we were putting marbles in a vase and getting them back again uh, so let's put an A, a B, a C and a D marble into this vase here and let's take out a marble our first marble can have any of four values it could be the A, the B, the C or the D second marble we take out since we've already taken out and not put back one marble there are three marbles left so the value of this one could be if, if the first one was an A the second one could be a B, a C or a D etc and going on for uh, the third marble uh, picked from two choices and of course the fourth marble the one left over so the total possible number of permutations is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 or 4 factorial or expressed in um, Python code math factorial for 24 possible permutations. This is the exhaustive list of all permutations ordered, A, B, C and D being the first, or element 0 in this permutation catalog, A, B, D and C the second, A, C, B and D the third, etc, etc, all the way up to D, C, B and A. Now we're going to try and match a number and a given index to this permutation catalog. First I want to establish some terms I will be using throughout and this theory section. Permutation catalog is the ordered set of all of ABCD's permutations. We just saw the, uh, the catalog for ABC and D. Uh, index will be used as the term uh, referencing what item we want from that catalog or what item we are trying to construct actually we are not going to look up a given item we are going to construct it um, and I will be using the term slot as a position in the original list and uh, so uh, slot number two in the list A, B, C and D will be element C uh, because it will be zero indexed slot zero in A, B, C and D would be the A 
and um, I'm using a different word slot here because I want to avoid using the index in two different contexts. We will we have the index for permutation catalog and we have the index for a, a, a given element in the original list, in the original array of elements we want to permutate over. And that would create confusion, so whenever I reference a position on the original list, I will use the word slot. Let's um, extend our example. We already had the example list A, B, C, and D. Now let's take a look at what would be um, permutation number 5 of A, B, C, and D. Note that also this index is zero based. Um, so if we were to scroll back to the, to the permutation catalog of A, B, C, D, we would find that the sixth item on that list is ADCB and that's the one we want when we say index number 5. Index number 0 would reference ABCD itself. So the first element when um, when we get the index the first element could either be A, B, C or D depending on indexes 0 through 5, 6 through 11, 12 through 17 or 18 through 23. So how do we map the index in range from 0 to 23? to a slot on the list A, B, C, D with positions 0, 1, 2 or 3. Obviously when we want to reduce a 24 cycle or a, a range of 24 through a range of 4 we can divide by 6 because 4 times 6 itself again is uh, 24. So our slot, our number indicating where on the list we want to pick an item from and put it on the head of our uh, result is simply the index divided by 6, rounded down or converted to integer or... Uh... So where did that 6 come from? Once we fixed any element to the head of our permutation, uh, then we're going to look at how long it stays at the head of that permutation. So if you take a look at the uh, permutation catalog, you can see a pattern where, where we get the A at the head for indexes 0 through 5, so for 6 consecutive numbers, A is our lead element, then B is up for 6 turns, then it's C, and then there's D. And why is that for 6 consecutive items on the catalog? Um, that's because we take a look at the tail, and there are um, 3 elements left in the tail that can be uh, shown in any order, and how many possible combinations are there for those 3 elements to appear? That's 3 factorial. So that's where our 6 comes from. Basically we can write this um, more generically for any length list. So if we were to take a look again at the uh, problem statement from Project Euler, we would have 10 elements on our list. We pick one and there are 9 remaining. So we take factor 9 factorial to divide our index by. That would give us the slot for our first element. So now we have the first element of our um, uh, permutation fixed. You can um, check this out. You can you can uh, set up a sample script for A, B, C, and D and feed it any number through uh, from zero up to 23. This formula will always return um, A for inde and indices zero through five, B for indices six through eleven, etc. How are we going to determine what will be the um, second, third and fourth items in our permutation. Let's first, let's take a little bit of a closer look at what we've done up to now. We've determined the slot, which in case of um, uh, when we take the formula and we substitute in the index 5 we are looking at, the length of the list 4 minus 1 giving us 3 factorial, comes out at 0. So the first item will be an A. Second step, moving that item from the list into the resulting permutation. Permutation, which we will still um, work on, will now be set to abcd.pop slot, and pop is a, um, pop is a function uh, that works on lists. When you pop an element, it removes the element from the list and you get as a return value, you get that element. But it also modifies the list itself. So when I call uh, pop on element 0, the, the head of the list, then uh, whatever variable I uh, assign it to will be A, 
But the list itself will also be modified. So the next time I look at the list, it is a modified version of itself containing only B, C, and D. This is important. This is very useful. And now we can rephrase the problem. So now we have a list of B, C, and D. And what's the fifth permutation on that list? Get the result for that. Keep on looking for elements number three and four. And then prepend any elements that we found up to now. Recursion. Calling the same function over the same or slightly modified parameters and then concatenating the results. That's recursion. But before we can um, uh, link this all up, Using recursion, there are a couple of uh, edge cases and loose ends we need to tie up first. First point of order, what if the index is greater than or equal to um, the factorial that we get? So um, on our list of um, A, B, C and D, we get an index 22, which falls in the range of uh, the 24 possibilities. It's in the range of 0 up and including 23, so there's no problem there. Uh, we determine that the first element that we should have in our permutation is a D. And then we use this function again recursively, so we get the list A, B, C, and we want to know index 22. There's only six possibilities, and we want index 22. Now, that's not going to compute, um, but we can simply take the 22 modulo 6, and whatever remains is uh, is the index that we want to use for this smaller subselection. This basically boils down to the fact that if you have a um, list of six possibilities and you want the seventh, you can simply uh, look at possibility number one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then concatenate that list to itself. So you get element seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. And then you can look at element number seven. But doing that in reverse, it's basically um, taking the modulo of um, 7 mod 6 resulting in 1 so then you look at element number 1 so instead of rotating your results at the end to meet the index you are clamping the index back into the range that your original result set has so that's what we're going to do now before we determine slot we are first going to take the modulo over the index so our new index is the index modulo um, the factorial for the given uh, number of possibilities. So that's 22 modulo 6 gives us index number 4 and then we look at the slot. So we have the list uh, in, in case of 22 we already taken the D out so we have the list ABC. What slot do we need on that list that's, a, uh, uh, that's either a um, 0, a 1 or a 2. So we want our new index being 4 over 2 factorial, which is simply 2. 4 over 2 is 2. So we want the C. And then we're going to determine what items 3 and 4 are. So our list will contain 2 items and then only 1 item. Our vase will contain only 2 marbles and then only 1 marble. But there are special... Um, special cases for lists with length 2 and 1 and also for 0 if we get an empty list with 0 elements we should simply return an empty list back at the, at the user uh, uh, at the function calling us if we get a list with only one item obviously there's only one way to permutate over one item so we could return a list with then one item or simply return the base list that we got in in the first place and if you get a list with two items, it's really rather trivial to see, based on the index, what the relative order should be. If you set x to be uh, index modulo 2, we would get either a 0 or a 1 for even or odd numbers. And if you use the statement below that, if you look at the list that we got and we re first return element x, and then 1 minus x, then we would uh, always get elements 0 and 1 in that order if the index was even or elements 1 and 2 if the index was odd. So that's how we handle cases with length, uh, list lengths 0, 1 or 2. And then we can start tying this all together. Uh, and your permutation function might look like something like this. Um, no, 
that in the coding video we will add some stuff that we need uh, from a more practical point of view to handle all edge cases and to make the code more efficient and look good in Python code. Uh, there's slightly more than just a spare theory to it, but it could look something like this. Uh, we have a function that gives us a permutation. It takes in an index and a list. At the top you see our three edge cases and from then on we get uh, we first get the number of possibilities in F and then we also get the number of possibilities for one factorial less than one we're currently looking at. We determine the index by taking the modulo over the index on F and then we determine the slot and we return a list containing the one popped item plus whatever the permutation function calling itself again using the same index and the same list. Note that the list got modified by the pop call and the index is already uh, clamped by modulo to this iteration but it will again look at um, if that index is still valid or needs to be clamped again for the next iteration on the smaller list. Uh, this is all in this function. It, this happens at determining f. So there's where uh, recursion will build up this list and eventually re simply return um, the entire permutated, um, the correct permutation for the index given at the start of uh, calling this function for the first time. So that's the theory and I will see you again for the actual coding video. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in ONB? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.